Hello, Chicago. All right. All right. Well, seriously, I, I really do appreciate everybody, you know, hanging around. It's kind of a long day being the last here. Uh, so I know you like you're my you're my people by staying here. So uh, there's, for using the word simplify, that's a very long title. But I believe in you know microwaves, microwave, refrigerators, refrigerate, and this is simplifying signing get commits and tags with SSH keys. Um, so Andy Feller. I am a DevOps engineer with my compatriots, uh, Preston and Bryant, over at GitHub. And uh, I'm in our expert services, so we work with customer engagements, helping them adopt and adapt GitHub for their needs. And uh, at Andy Feller is my handle. Once again, uh, it's red on the 10. So uh, outcome-wise, right, uh, was really trying to think about this kind of a workshop of like, what would you hope to get out of it? So when you left today, that you actually had something you can do with it. And so it's really kind of three things, right? Like what's kind of the motivation behind signing and specifically signing with SSH keys? You know, can you actually get some hands-on experience? You know, like you will actually use your computer. So if, if you brought a laptop and you're actually interested, I would say get it out now and get it ready. There'll be a, a, a link or URL that pops up soon. Uh, if, if you've been to any of the other workshops, you've probably already seen the repo for this. Uh, but then lastly, like talking about like an adoption plan. If this is something that you're kind of interested in kind of you know, discussing with your peers that you work with, you know, kind of taking it you know, beyond Git Merge, you know, what might you consider uh, you know, as a path forward? So, so talking about the motivation, uh, so we, we see the screenshot here. Uh, and once again, you know, uh, this, is, this is something that's prevalent in all of Git, like regardless of who hosts your repositories, what you sign it with. Um, so here's a screenshot of a pull request that I created. And you, you might kind of notice that this isn't me, like whatsoever. This is me trying to impersonate uh, the GitHub CEO, uh, Thomas Dumke. And as you can kind of see, it says, hey, look, like we can't actually verify that he signed this commit. Um, and so, you know, it's very clear that, hey, look, like this person has to upload a public key. Uh, here's like the fingerprint. And so this should be like really kind of a big, big flag of like maybe you shouldn't actually like merge this. Uh, whereas, you know, you might have something like this, which is kind of a, a big kind of a green box, a big kind of a check mark that says, hey, look, not only do we see that there's a signature here, but we're able to actually verify it against you know, signing keys that this individual has uploaded. You know, you know that you know, Andy Feller, as far as we can you know, guarantee, um, has actually committed this. And so you know, in terms of you know, whether, whether it's Git or any other kind of source control system, you know, this concept of unverified and verified commits kind of come into play. And so unverified meaning you have a commit, a tag, you know, some kind of you know, interaction with the source control that either has no signature or has a signature that you can't verify versus verified, which is there is a signature and it's actually been able to be verified against a specific list of people uh, or you know, individuals or apps or whatever that uh, you can cryptographically verify, right? And so, like, for anybody who's never really kind of delved deep into Git, just just a little bit of a perspective here. So as we kind of saw in some of the talks today, like under the covers, Git is basically a database, and that every single like commit and tag and whatnot has like an object associated with it. And so in this kind of commit here, which if you have a, a SHA, you know, you can kind of look at, um, the, the problem comes in with the fact that if you're not signing your commits, all that you really have is uh, an author and a committer. Like just like those two lines of, you know, that kind of get object. And because multiple people have access to a repository, anybody can say, well, I'm Ash Tom at GitHub.com. I'm Andy Feller at GitHub.com. You know, I'm, uh, you know, you know, you know, pick your pick your celebrity that you want to go impersonate, uh, because Git wasn't really designed with uh, originally with you know uh, 
you know, authenticity of authorship or committers um, you know, out of the gate. And so that's kind of where like this, this last line here, which you know, the header kind of is called like GPG SIG, but we kind of see in this field that it's actually a SSH signature kind of got introduced. And so like that signature is really like however you sign uh, your commits and whatnot you can try to cryptographically determine whether or not it's actually true. Like, did this person or thing uh, actually sign it? So that's really kind of like the, you know, like the, the main motivation. And as you can kind of see, there's been multiple methods of signing commits and tags and whatnot, you know, since you know, 2012, you know, back in Git 1.79. Um, so, you know, you know, GPG has been around for forever. Uh, you know, more recently there's the X509, or you might see it as called like S-MIME. Uh, but I think th what we kind of saw last year in November of 2021 was a lot of the community saying that, you know, GPG and X509 kind of uh, signature was, you know, there's too much infrastructure that you have to manage, it's a little bit more complicated, and it's not something that we're actively using. Uh, and I'll be honest, like I've never in my 20 year career worked at a place that required me to actually like use GPG to sign and trust everything. And so, you know, th the community was saying, well, hey, look, like we're using SSH, you know, to, 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 uh, to connect into boxes, right? Like we're using it throughout our infrastructure, you know, we have cloud infrastructure and we're able to, uh, you know, everybody's using SSH keys, so why can we leverage what's in the open SSH library to actually like sign content? And so in, you know, get 2.34 in November, that's when uh, support for SSH signing was introduced. So, once again, if you've kind of gone to the uh, github.com slash git merge workshops, uh, there should be a number of repositories, and one of them is called Simplifying Signing with SSH. So if you have your laptop and you're interested in kind of following along, you certainly can do so. Uh, also want to kind of note that this presentation and all the exercises uh, are captured in a repository, and I believe that afterward, uh, you know, all these sessions are being recorded, they'll be uploaded. So, you know, you certainly can follow along afterwards, you can share it with others, um, but, so with that being said, for people who want to follow along, let's kind of uh, delve into this. So there's really five exercises, and, you know, I kind of like earmark this as, you know, like maybe it's kind of like 30 minutes of kind of an exercise, a little bit of give or take, um, and it, you know, it, it, it reads on the tin, right? Like, for people who maybe uh, haven't updated their Git in a while or whatever, like we can help you set up your workstation. And then uh, some hands-on exercises where you'll actually sign and verify commits, merges, tags, and then also kind of like amending or re-signing old commits and tags uh, in case you know, somebody had made a mistake. So for each one of these, you know, we'll, we'll try to walk through it on the overhead a little bit, but if, you, if you're kind of stuck and you need help, you know, feel free to raise your hand. Uh, feel free to raise your hand if you like to ask questions. Um, you know, this is about you. So, uh, you know, if you're not successful, then, you know, this isn't successful. So, so with that, I want to talk about uh, setting up uh, your workstation. And uh, I'm going to kind of flip-flop between the presentation and the actual exercises a bit. Uh, I'm not going to run the exercises, but we could certainly, like, view over it. Um, but at a high level, you know, uh, get, you can configure repositories globally or locally. And so like the main pieces here are, there's, there's a number of specific get configurations that you use to turn on SSH signing. You know, specifically uh, you know, the GPG format config, which is a little misleading, but trust me, like this is appropriate. Uh, an option you may have not seen, which is your signing key. And then lastly, the, this is a concept of an allowed signers file. So for people who don't know the ins and outs of OpenSSH, we'll talk about it in a second. Well, actually, uh, right here at the bottom of the slide, we see this little kind of block here with uh, what kind of looks like uh, two public keys. 
And so this is kind of uh, a notion that we'll, we'll talk about a little bit more is all the SSH signing is built on top of OpenSSH uh, 8.0 or later. And so there's a file called allowed signers that allows you to uh, capture very specific keys that you want to trust and the principles behind them. So in this case here, I have two lines in my allowed signers file that come from two different uh, email addresses that are both mine uh, with two different keys. So one of them is my work laptop, one of them is my personal laptop. Uh, but with that being said, I want to kind of pivot here over to the actual So for, for everybody who's checked out and following along with our repository, um, setting up to the workstation. So at a minimum, uh, get 2.34 or newer is necessary, and then uh, open SSH uh, 8.0 or newer. Uh, so there, for anybody who's never installed or downloaded uh, Git for any operating system, there's multiple links. Uh, if you're on a Mac, Brew works really well. For uh, Windows, you could download the, uh, the MSI and install it. The, uh, the, the, the Git Bash environment that's set up with the, uh, the Windows MSI actually works really well. It includes Vim, Tree, and a number of other Linux utilities you might use. Um, if you're on a MacBook, just uh, I guess as a real quick aside, uh, Mac comes with the 2.32 uh, version of Apple Git, and so you want to be very intentionally sure that you're using uh, the one that's installed from Homebrew because it hasn't been updated in a while. But you know, like once you're kind of like done setting up, you know, your identity, right? Because your your author and your committer information uses the uh, the username and user email. For anybody who's not familiar with SSH, um, never know, you might have some. SSH signing requires SSH keys. Uh, typically, uh, we generally recommend like the newer, uh, the ED25519 uh, cipher, which is, you know, sufficiently uh, cryptographically secure versus like a much larger like RSA kind of a cipher. Uh, but if you're on an older system and you don't have support for the, uh, the ED25519, you certainly can use a more uh, a 4096 bit entropy uh, you know, RSA key if you really want to. But either way, once you generate a key, you set proper permissions for it, you know, it's fairly straightforward. And hopefully, uh, for, for everybody following along on the uh, repository, there's a very nice little copy button here that can make it a lot easier for some of these commands. So, yeah. Ah, great question. I'm gonna I'll repeat it just to make sure that I'm kind of following along. Um, so the question was, hey, look, if I have an SSH key, should I use that or should I generate a new one? Uh, I would say this is one of those gray areas that the community has you know, different opinions. So the, the most conservative uh, feedback that you'll find is, hey, look, actually generate a totally separate key for SSH signing than you use for traversing your, your networks. Um, the notion being that you know, if one of them is compromised and you have to kind of uh, kill it or regenerate it, you're, old, you're minimizing the kind of impact of either signing artifacts or getting around your network. Whereas if you're using the same one for both, like you might be more sufficiently uh, impact, like you just, just a, a broader impact. So yeah, thank you, Martin, that's, that's a great question. Um, and in my case here, I actually, probably did a little bit of both. So we're, we're just gonna frown over that for a second. Um, disclaimer. So this workshop is an introduction, right? This is a very deep and a very broad topic. And just to make it easy for people getting into signing with SSH keys, uh, you know, this is having you set up the SSH agent and adding your private key to that even though there might be kind of some more optimal methods, especially if you use other kinds of tools like 1Password and whatnot. So 
I guess, you know, taking all this with a little grain of salt that, you know, this is certainly more introductory. Um, but as we were kind of talking about earlier, like in uh, the other slide, this, this allowed signers file looks like your public key file in just a different order. And so this should be a fairly copy and pasteable way to take your public key if you're generating it with your email and just kind of recreating it. So, so lastly, just kind of closing the loop here on the, this just workstation setup. All these instructions are working on a local repository that you don't have to upload. You can do it locally. You don't need a network connection to do it. Um, so you can throw it away. You can keep it. Um, you can shellac it. You know, put it on the fridge with a gold star. Um, you know, send me pics, whatever you do. But the last thing here really is, you know, once you get SSH key set up, once you have SSH set up and a key added to it, like these are really the three critical configuration options for a particular repository to do SSH signing. And just if, if you're brand new to this, I would say don't, don't do the global version of these config commands. You definitely want to very intentionally know when you want to adopt this globally. Um, that's just kind of there for completeness. So before moving on, um, I don't mind if people want to raise hands, ask questions, or want clarity before moving on. So this is an opportunity. And we'll have time for questions at the end as well, and even after the workshop. So um, OK, OK. So this is really where we're actually going to like, OK, so hopefully at this point, you have an SSH key, agents running. You should be capable of doing commits and verifying them. This is really going to be the test of it. Um, and as you can kind of see, right, at, at, at a high level, none of the, there, there's very few commands that should be completely new. There's maybe one of them here that you've never seen. But everything else uh, for people who been fairly familiar with Git is the same commands that you're used to, maybe with some additional flags. And that's specifically the dash capital S, capital S on commit, the show signature on log, and some new kind of commits. And so for this in the remaining slides, uh, we have an illustration of the actual Git repository that you'll be creating in the end state for that particular exercise. So for this one, by the end of it, you'll have a repository with a single commit, which isn't terribly exciting, but it's, it's where you start. So I love copy and paste. Uh, it really helps when you do operational uh, troubleshooting at 2 a.m. on your kitchen floor. And so, you know, this exercise kind of walks through in generating a very straightforward readme file. It's very copy and pasteable. Um, but, you know, once again, like for people who, who are fairly familiar with Git, you know, what should stand out here is that when you're doing signing, whether it's GPG, X509, or SSH, is this capital S option. And I'm I'm harping on this because the lowercase s is for kind of a complementary uh, capability of Git called sign off. So signing is for the authentic authenticity of the committer. Sign off is for the committer to say that I'm allowed to commit this, you know, based on you know, terms and conditions and whatnot. So two very important things. It's easy to confuse the two. Um, but the notion here is that, you know, and you know, hopefully, as you're kind of following along and actually doing this, uh, try to bake a lot of the troubleshooting of, hey, look, I ran this. It doesn't look like it worked. Um, try to capture that back into the actual exercise itself. So you know, if you kind of get something like this here where you see the, you know, that root commit, file change, everything's created, great. You know, you've set everything up perfectly, and you have no problems for the rest of this exercise. Um, but if you see something like the second message here, uh, which is completely cryptic, 
uh, you possibly have you know, a problem with one of these three things. Uh, SSH agent was stopped, you didn't add the private key with the SSH add in the previous exercise, or there's a little bit of a mismatch between your public and private keys. So before I kind of, I guess, like move on from here, uh, anybody following along that ran into a problem that is not shown in this possible results? Okay, cool. So hopefully everything kind of ran quickly, ran well, there's no problems. It looks like Git like you're used to using. And this is really kind of where the first brand new command you've probably never used comes into play, and that's verify commit. And so in this case here, we're gonna look at like the, the last commit on the branch and what you should kind of start seeing here is this notion of this good get signature for uh, this principle, right? The principle in this case is you know, me at my GitHub email address uh, with this key. And so that's how you can kind of look at a specific commit and know that one, it's been signed, and two, that it's actually good. Um, Additionally, right, so that's how you can look at a specific commit and actually verify that it's good. But if you want to look at the entire history of the repository, there's an additional flag you can pass into get log called get show signature. Um, and once again, if everything looks uh, you know, completely uh, set up correctly, you should see that good get signature, blah, 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 blah. Uh, and there's, you know, there's a handful of possible other kinds of uh, results that you could get depending upon you know, any kind of issues with setup. So the middle one there, um, yep, once again, if you didn't run the proper git conf uh, config options there for the repository, um, all of these I ran into, testing both on Windows and Mac. So this is, this is my own kind of life here, you're living here. Uh, but additionally, you know, um, the second one here, uh, blah, 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 blah. okay, yeah, yeah. So all of this is just due to just either human error, or just kind of uh, like having SSH keys in, in the improper format. So in all these exercises, you know, all these additional flags, like it, it's nice to know them, but like as a person, I don't do everything the same way each and every time. Like that's just reality. Uh, if you're like me, you might choose to use something like some of these additional Git config options to uh, enable them by default. So you can use your standard git commit commands, your standard git log commands, and have it do signing for you automatically and to show you uh, log signatures for you automatically. So if you have a repository that you've chosen to adopt signing, this could cut down on some of the errors if people you know, don't remember all those additional commands to do it right every single time. So if you choose to do signing, I certainly recommend looking at some of these additional configs. And so once again, by the end of this, you should have a repository with a single commit that head is pointed to. So nothing terribly exciting. Whoop. Okay, all right. All right, now we're gonna get slightly more complicated talking about merges. So if, if commit's the very first thing that people do after they have a repository, uh, branching and merging is the next. Uh, once again, there's actually gonna be uh, no new commands, just kind of additional flags in a potentially optional uh, configuration if you uh, want to make your life easier. Uh, but what you, what you see here is that we're gonna actually open up a feature branch um, we're, we're gonna get some of those uh, commits actually ready there, and then before merging it in, we're gonna make some changes back in the default branch uh, before ultimately merging that in. So nothing terribly unusual or complicated. All right, well, let's just do it. Oops. 
So one thing I want to point out here before we really kind of get into this, and this is kind of interesting with Git merge specifically. So the, the option that we're going to use here is called verify signature. And this could be potentially misleading. Um, so when I first read this, you know, my thought was, okay, you know, I have, I'm on this branch, I'm gonna merge this other uh, branch into it, and I want to actually make sure that everything is signed. Well, as it turns out, Git merge with the verify signature only looks at the tip of each branch to make sure that the tips are signed. So it's, it's possible that you, there might be a little bit of a, like a misleading assumption going on here. Um, now, I'll, I'll, I'll make a big disclaimer here that I'm not attending the Git uh, Committer Summit. I'm not somebody that truly understands all the internals of Git. Um, so, take it with a grain of salt, maybe there's a little bit of flexible wiggle room of like how this actually works under the covers. Um, but from what I can tell is that only the, the latest commits of each of the branches will actually be validated. So I think it's kind of just important to kind of point out. Um, but once again, as you're following along here, we're gonna check out a branch. We're, we're cutting a feature that will hopefully allow us to cut like a, a 1.0 release. Uh, once again, Andy likes copy and paste. Uh, and this isn't anything clever. Hello world, you know, it's where all of us started. Um, and if you, if you were uh, following along with the previous exercise and chose to do the get config options to sign commits by default, uh, all these exercises were kind of assuming that you did. Uh, once again, doing that locally within this repository. So you know, hopefully you have a feature branch, you have a brand new commit, there's no particular problems. And um, this, this is a little contrived. So this is a little contrived for this exercise here. Uh, but before merging it in, we wa I wanted to try to simulate um, some other kind of merge, uh, getting merged back into the default branch. Uh, but instead we're just creating it here. And in this case here, it's just updating the readme of, hey, look, like you're gonna have an app called Hello World. It's gonna be amazing. It's gonna change everything in your life. And it did for me. Um, and so in, in committing that in, once again, you know, we're adding it, we're committing it. Main is pointing at a different place than what it was when the feature was created. And so in merging in the feature branch back in, you know, once again, in having get set up correctly, having SSH agent running, you know, committing and validating work correctly. Verify signatures, uh, what it will do is in looking at both of those branches, if either one of them is not signed or can't be verified, uh, it will actually abort the commit. So once again, you know, some possible results that you see, you know, the good case is, hey, look, this commit happened, it's been merged in, everything is great. Um, but if there's an issue with either one of them not being signed, you should get a fatal, um, and it should tell you very clearly, this doesn't have a signature. Uh, and once again, um, a bit misleading this, asking for a GPG signature when we're, t we're doing SSH signatures. Uh, maybe that's an opportunity for like the, the next release of Git to kind of clarify that. But hopefully, right, you know, everything's set up and working, then when you're, uh, after you merge and you're looking at the log results here, you know, you should see that entire history of making a branch, making a commit, signing it all along the way, and every single commit being signed and trusted and verified. Yeah, so if you see that, you know, everything is great. And then, uh, you know, if you, once again, if you're choosing to do signing, you know, enabling that git config operation such that all the merges, make sure that they're doing the verify by default is gonna be a recommendation. Uh, if not, you will have a bad time if some people are uh, not signing certain things because it'll break the world. Uh, but hopefully at this time, you kind of have like a, a, a tree that kind of looks like this. Um, it looks complicated, not really, um, but. All right, 
I'm just looking around to make sure that anybody has a hand up. You know, it's always free to ask a question. Now, I really wish this is actually remember where I left off at, but that's fine. So uh, when, you, when you create an SSH key, that dash C option there is a comment. Uh, and yes, hopefully it's actually an email address or it could be anything that you put in there because it's a comment. So that's a great question about vendor support. All right, hold a second. Let me let me make sure this actually comes back on because apparently, uh, so I think we're, we're definitely getting into the the advanced topic at the end, which I love it. I love it. Uh, you're my kind of person. Um, hold a second. I'm seeing what's going on with the uh, the local Wi-Fi here. Um, About to pair this with my phone in a second if it doesn't resolve itself. Um, but just to answer your question a little bit, you're absolutely right. Like whatever you put in there doesn't even have to be an email address. Like if you look at the SSH, you know, uh, key gen like docs about the allowed signers file, Git is not actually checking that to see like what it is. So when you do that get log, it's literally showing you what that principle is in the uh, in the allowed signers file that you have. So it literally can be anything. Uh, I think it's, it, it, it is basically saying that out of all the keys that you trust and all the ways that you've described who or what um, might have done that signing, it matches. So this is kind of where we, I guess, begin to talk about what can vendors do beyond what was built in to get to kind of further on. So, um, yeah. All right, hold a second. You know what? We're just gonna pair this up to my phone here real quick. You know what, I got this. Really. All right. There we go. So once again, definitely love the question. You're definitely getting into the beyond section. So spoiler alert, at the end of all the exercises, there's a beyond section. Uh, all right. But I love it, absolutely love it. All right, so we talked about we talked about commits, we talked about merges. You have a laptop set up. Like this is like the easiest section ever, um, and it's tags, right? So, but something that's kind of interesting that I, I chose this as a topic because it wasn't something that I was like comfortable with, you know, um, having gotten into trouble with security stuff over the years. Uh, it's like, hey, I'd like to learn about something, uh, and once again, you know, GPG was always too hard for me, and so. One of the other things I learned through this is that there's actually two kinds of tags. 
right? So most of the tags that we use on a day-to-day -day basis are what called a lightweight tag, which is basically just a reference to a particular commit. So it's not super expensive, it's not super you know, uh, involved, but when we talk about signing uh, tags, you have this notion of an annotated tag, which is more akin to actually commits. So there's a lot more metadata that's actually captured there, uh, including you know, author, tagger, whatever. But yeah, a little bit of trivia, there's multiple kinds of tags. And so, like the other commands that we've been running, there's nothing really new here except for the fact that there's an additional flag to the tag command. And unfortunately, you know, for, 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 for commit, it's a capital S. Unfortunately for tag, it's a lowercase s. Um, but if everything's working well, it looks like all of your other kind of get tagging kind of commands. And uh, if you did everything right, it doesn't say anything. If you did it wrong, you can get messages like this, right? You can't find GVG, fail to sign it. Uh, and once again, it all goes back to that first exercise of is SSH agent running? Is your key added? Is your allowed signers file set up correctly? And all those configs are there. And then, uh, you know, a new command like verify commit, verify tag. Um, the verbose option gives you a lot more detail including, you know, SHA type, whatnot. Um, so this, this is what a annotated tag looks like under the covers. Lastly, uh, if, if you're choosing to do SSH signing and you want to make sure that you're always signing everything, I definitely encourage setting uh, config options so it, it happens by default. Very easy. And so by the end of this, you know, not much more complication from the last step. We have a tag that points to the same commit as head. Oh, great. I was actually you know, keeping track. All right, last exercise. Let me talk about the other fun stuff. So we talked about if you initially sign commits, merges, and tags, what happens if somebody doesn't configure it or you're choosing to uh, adopt signing for an existing project. And this is really where you have to kind of get into either uh, amending commits uh, or uh, nested tags is, is what's actually happening under the covers in that second command there. And so this exercise really just kind of creates like a new commit and tries to tag it. It kind of gives you experience intentionally not signing and then going through the exercise of signing it. Liking things like Hello World, who doesn't like FUBAR? Um, so just to kind of preface or uh, get this new tag set up, we just kind of create like a new little script called foo, tells you it's bar, and a little bit of an update to the readme file. Once again, it, so, so what's specifically going on here because we're trying to set up that case where somebody commits something that's not signed, this is very explicitly saying like don't sign this. Uh, once again, a little bit of a misnomer that says no GPG sign, even though we're using SSH signatures. Um, but like, once you do the commit, if you look at the log, you'll see that there's no signature shown there, you know, no good get signature. Um, and so fixing it is basically doing uh, the get commit amend. In this case here, just because we're amending like the last commit, we don't have to provide a SHA. Um, but also because like we're not changing anything about it, like we're also passing that no edit flag. Um, and so by running it, it'll effectively uh, just sign it using all the same information that was there. And so when we verify it, what you'll find is that the commit SHA has been changed. So when you do uh, sign an old commit or even an old tag, you'll find you know, there are new SHAs provided. Once again, you know, Git is cryptographically secure. So changes get new signatures. Now, if you're having to do this for like an entire branch, 
Um, this, is, this is not where I am an expert, so I'll apologize. Um, there is a way to kind of rebase an entire branch to resign the whole branch. Um, and that's kind of where you'll do this rebase with the exact of that same get, commit, amend. Uh, and in this case here, you might pick your default branch or a feature branch or whatever. But that'll at least allow you to go through the whole thing to resign all of it. So last two parts of this kind of exercise, right? So we created a commit, we didn't sign it, we re-signed it. Um, I'm not sure if re-signed is the correct verb, but we'll go with it. Uh, and we'll do the same thing with tags, right? You know, very similar, you know, get tag with dash dash and then sign. We're intentionally setting up a new uh, tag without it. So this will be a lightweight. Um, looking at the information there and we'll actually see an error here that there's like no signatures set up. So a little bit kind of a different kind of response than get tag, or uh, sorry, get commit, um, but all the same, you know, create a commit that's not signed. And so what's interesting with signing tags is that it uses this notion of nested tags. Um, once again, this is kind of an area that I'm not an authority. I wish I could tell you more. Um, but to tag or to re-tag a tag, it looks like a get tag command. You're using the same name for both, uh, but you also have to force it, and then we're also making sure to sign it. Um, and so there's a little bit of a warning disclaimer that comes up of saying, "Hey, you're pushing a nested tag, and that's okay," because um, like under the covers, what we'll see is you know. The tag will get updated. We'll see the signature there. Um, it should be pointing to like a, a new object. But all that being said, you know, if you're choosing to design commits and tags and merges and pushes, there's there's more. Um, you know, this is a way that you can like fix the oopses. And the reason why you want to you have to fix the oopses, especially with things like merge and push. If you're saying things have to be signed and people aren't signing them, it basically stops the world. So going back through and like fixing all those things to, to get everything back on track is a little bit of a pain, which is why all those git config options for turning on by default are really recommended. But you know, being the last kind of exercise, you know, hopefully you have a git repository that looks like this, you know, a handful of commits, a handful of tags, a branch, but it kind of gives you at least a little bit of a taste of what like signing content in Git kind of looks like um, behind it. All right, so we're talking about beyond. Love it. So we'll, we'll get to beyond. We'll get to beyond. Um, so I promised you three things, three outcomes, right? You understand why this is a topic. We can give you experience, uh, but I want to talk about where do you go from here, right? And so, you know, having the Git community add support for this is like the, was the first step. And it really kind of falls upon the vendors that support you in your mission of being product developers, right? And focusing on what you do on a day-to-day -day basis to support you. And so, you know, I certainly appreciate that all the vendors that participate as part of the Git community are working towards it or have released support for it. So uh, August 23rd, GitHub finally released support for SSH signing for .com. Uh, GitLab and Bitbucket are also in progress for adding support. Uh, so whoever you're with, you know, hopefully support is on the way. Beyond that, I, I see maybe kind of like four things I kind of want to point out here when you think about an adoption plan. So. SSH signing isn't the beginning of signing with Git, right? It obviously started with GPG keys back in 2012. And so some of the feedback like you'll see from the community is that, you know, here are some enterprise challenges with um, GPG signing that we had to kind of face and deal with that are not necessarily solved out of the box if you just look at the support added to Git. You know, typically SSH keys aren't 
capture it and distribute it so they're freely available as a web of trust. Um, so they're not distributed, they're not discoverable, and uh, there's no concept of a revocation strategy. So if a key gets compromised, what do you do about it? Um, so this shouldn't dissuade anybody. I think these are just like the next challenges that we as a community and the vendors that we work with have to solve. Uh, but they certainly get pointed out. Um, the other thing is, once again, this is kind of where we need vendors, uh, whoever they are, and how they are going to support this feature will vary naturally. You know, GitHub currently is the only one with support out currently. So having things like APIs for fetching, signing keys, having things like vigilant mode to make sure people are signing stuff um, or enforcing signing will be important, but it'll all depend upon what your vendor uh, comes out with. Last two things uh, on an adoption plan before we dovetail into beyond is, um, to, if you're in a situation where your vendor doesn't have support, you know, one thing that you could consider doing is actually committing the allowed signers file to your repository and then having the developers that work on it to uh, use it in their configuration as the trust file. So, you know, worst case scenario, if you're kind of interested in playing with it, it's obviously an option that you could follow. Uh, and then lastly, so this is actually from the pro get uh, SCM book, right, uh, which is uh, everyone must sign. So if you're choosing to do, like signing your content because, uh, all good, all good. Uh, but everybody has to sign if you're choosing to do this because, you know, one unsigned commit kind of breaks the process because uh, th this concept of everything is being signed because authenticity matters. Um, so it's not something that you just adopt, you know, at a whim. It's, it's something you have a conversation about and you understand the trade-offs uh, and you choose to adopt it and you start small and you go from there uh, because unverified uh, will break everything. All right. Appreciate your patience. This is about to be wrapped up, but this is an introductory, right? Um, this is a deeper and a broader topic than I can do in 50 minutes. In the workshop repository, there's kind of a section that talks about like, where do you go beyond this? Um, and some of this is like personal opinion. You know, it, it's not an opinion at GitHub or anybody's, it's just personal opinion. Um, but a couple other things that I found useful in putting this together, I thought I would share. So the only uh, public um, project I could find that did interesting things with verify commits was actually the Bitcoin project. So they have some client-side uh, hooks that before they're actually pushing up to their remote store will actually check every single commit to see whether or not it's signed and if it's trusted. So this is kind of like a, an early kind of approach before vendors supported it to you know, verify that everything is actually signed uh, to make it easier for the contributors. So it's kind of interesting, maybe something that can be adapted. Um, flying over here from uh, Raleigh, North Carolina, where I live, uh, one of the pain points is that you know, this file, this allowed signers file requires uh, you know, public key, signing keys from everybody that you want to trust. So if you're on GitHub and you want all the keys for all the people on the team that you're on, uh, here's a little GitHub CLI extension that you can point at your team and generate like the, the allowed signers file for you. So hopefully it makes it pretty easy if you're working with a team. And then once again, I, want, I really want to keep, I really want to say thank you to vendors for trying to support this feature for users, right? Once again, you know, adding it to Git uh, it was only the first step. We really need vendors to support it. So hopefully, you know, you know GitLab, Bitbucket, they're actively working on it. Hopefully you'll start seeing it soon if that's something you need. And then lastly, um, so recently 1Password, right, so if you're using them for like holding passwords or things like keys, uh, they recently re like really support for this. So, you know, hopefully as like other vendors really support for that, if this is something that you use and you want it as a really easy way to keep your keys secure, this might be something that you're interested in. So obviously, you know, the community as a whole is, is working to improve the story behind this to, you know, let you get back to focusing on what you do 
uh, with a, a greater sense of trust. And once again, take all of it with a grain of salt. This is just kind of like me personally, uh, professional opinion. But you know, thank you all for staying. This is the last session of the day. You know, thank you for the staff for setting things up. Uh, I definitely appreciate the opportunity for being out here and your time and attention. And I also want to thank a handful of people. Uh, I'm not going to read you all their names, but these are all individuals who reviewed, gave feedback, you know, worked behind the scenes in helping me, uh, you know, vet this uh, content. So, you know, a lot of people are behind all of this. And so, uh, Q&A, anybody would like to ask more questions? And we're also going to be hanging out after this. So if you want to like talk afterwards, like we're totally available. If you want to talk one on one, so. Gotcha. So, uh, just repeating back to your question for people listening, making sure that I'm understanding. Um, so, when you work at a company of 100, 200, 1,000, 10,000 people, like how do you manage this at scale, right? Like, where does that actually sit? And that's kind of where I think you'll start seeing things like what GitHub calls vigilant mode or other features at that level. With, like, this is something you should ask your vendors for, like having them hear your voice of, we're interested in this. We actually need you to do the heavy lifting, right? That's why you're, we're your customers. Um, and you're starting to see that at GitHub with uh, what we call vigilant mode. Um, but I think, I think there's more kind of run room to kind of um, deal with things like revocation and whatnot that, you know, like talking to your, your vendor of saying like, this is a value to us, like make it happen is probably what you're going to see. So my answer is, your vendors should definitely solve it for you. That's why, that's why you're paying them the money, right? <laughs> don't get me wrong. So a follow-up, if you don't mind. If I own a GitHub org or an enterprise, how do I make sure that all the contributors in my organization have that turned on? Gotcha. So I would say uh, that might be policy set uh, beyond individuals. Right, either at, uh, so disclaimer, I'm going to speak in uh, GitHub uh, enterprise terms. So maybe that's something that you set at the uh, repository, the organization, or enterprise level. Um, I think like if you're not already signing, you probably be, want to be very intentional with what your rollout strategy is. Right, so here's a specific repository that we want to try this um, and seeing if those policy mechanisms at the repository level are available to turn those on to say like, hey, only allow like signed commits or vigilant mode on. Um, now, I guess disclaimer, uh, I certainly would love to have a follow-up conversation where we sit down and actually see what is currently available and figure out what's on the a roadmap to say, you know, the terms and conditions of what's currently out there because it's got released what? two weeks ago, three weeks ago. But I think, I, I think it's valid feedback, right? Like as administrators, as people who are enabling business concerns, how do we make this easy? Yeah, that's what I would say. Thank you. Um, like you mentioned, this is only as good as the like, SHA-1 hash is in your repository. Do you, I'm, I'm not up to date, but I was wondering if you knew the status of like Git's migration and GitHub's migration to using SHA-256 or what that looks like? Just to make sure I'm following. Uh, so for, so SHA-1 being the historical usage of uh, SHA, SHA-SUMS, has been found to be uh, insufficient to be uh, as secure due to the amount of entropy or whatever. Um, 
So I don't really know the status of that. That's right. Uh, I think it's a very good question. You know what? Uh, I'm taking a note. Actually, this guy. Seven. Oh, thank you. <laughs> um, Derek Stoley's here tomorrow. Um, I mean, we can check on with him on that question then. I know we were having a discussion about it being in the, the on the Git DL. There's a discussion about it being on the next kind of major version of Git, and if it should be on three, you know. So yeah, let's talk about it tomorrow. I think it's a great question to bring up there. I mean, you can't see it. But I'm literally taking notes. Like we're going to have this conversation. Uh, so, yep, Shaw 2 v 6 support, talking about enforcing that policy uh, and rolling out at scale. Don't be shy. I'm a bit of an ambivert, so this is, there's this all thing, so. All right, well, add Andy Feller if you want. Hit me up, be happy to follow up, but thank you for your time and attention, and I hope you enjoy Chicago as much as I am.